Oh, hey guys, welcome back to the channel, both of you. This little video is something I'm calling How I Got the Shot, and it sounds incredibly, you know, <laughs> egotistical and lectury and all that. So I thought about naming it different things, but it really is How I Got the Shot. So, so I posted a picture that I took recently of a bumblebee and uh, I'll post it here on the, put it up on the screen. And I'm kind of proud of it. And it came out really great, I think. And it was completely spontaneous and unplanned. It was one of those, you know, crimes of opportunity. I was out doing other work, just shooting video for a YouTube video for another channel. And this bumblebee just kept hovering around. And I thought, you know, after passing him by several times and him still being in that same general area, I thought, wow, I should try to get a picture of him. So I try to always have gear with me, and I did on that day. But I'm usually, I have a long lens, and, you know, I'm, I'm looking for opportunities to maybe shoot a bird or some kind of an animal in the woods or something like that. So I'm kind of equipped for that. So I posted this picture, and I got a lot of really positive response and thank you to all those people who provided that positive response. I also had a number of people asking, how did you get the shot? You know, what were the technical specs of, of not just the photograph, which I will give you, but also what did you do? <laughs> you know, how did you actually take the picture? And I, that's a pretty good question. I would, if I looked at that picture and somebody else had taken it, I would have all those same questions. Wow, nice shot. How did you do that? So I thought, why not share? So first of all, this was the gear. So for starters, camera body is the Z9. And this is my absolute go-to camera. This camera is really represents the state of the art in still photography today. And I think in many ways, it was also state of the art in videography as well. Uh, but anyway, this was the Z9 that I had, and the lens was this one. It is the Nikon 500PF lens, 500 millimeter f5.6. PF, phase for now, is what PF stands for. And, you know, it's, it's relatively light and compact for a 500 millimeter prime lens. So that's the gear. Now, let's talk about what I did to get the shot. I tried using autofocus for about five seconds. There's no way to autofocus on such a small, erratically moving subject with the AF system, at least not with my skill level. And I'm not saying that Nikon's autofocus system couldn't do it, but you'd have to use single point and, you know, you'd have to be a video game whiz kid to be able to keep that single point of autofocus on a moving B. So I used to have to follow focus. I used to have to follow a running back or a wide receiver down the field or keep track of the action in a soccer match with my 400 millimeter f3.5 manual Nikon lens. And that was shooting on film when you had to count your shots and make your shots count. So I figured I could maybe try to dust off that old skill, but with the help of this new technology. I switched the 500 PF lens to manual focus and sport mode vibration reduction. I set the shutter speed to 1 6400th of a second with the lens wide open at 5.6. The ISO was set to auto and it jumped up to 5000. Again, bright sunny day, but at 1 6400th of a second f5.6, you're going to have a bit of a high ISO. I also had exposure compensation set to plus one third because I knew the black B would need some help. I probably could have gone to 0.7 or even a full stop, but that would have meant even more noise. I keep focus peaking enabled at all times on the Z9, and I use blue as the color. Uh, very few things in nature are bright blue, so it really stands out for me. I preset the focus to the minimum distance on the lens, and I waited for the B to enter the viewfinder as I tracked his movements as best I could. And then it was spray and pray time. I had the fast continuous shooting set to 20 frames per second with lossless raw and fine JPEG output. 
This ultra-scientific recreation of the event will give you an idea of the technique. I got a little bit further back in this test uh, to size the laboratory bee to about the same size in the frame as the real bee was. As the bee entered the frame, I started to rack focus. The instant I saw any blue, I got on and stayed on the trigger for long bursts of continuous shooting and tried to keep the bee outlined in blue the whole time. This actually gave me a lot of sharp images to choose from and I was able to go for the one that I thought was the best and that's this one. Again, this was an unplanned shot, just an opportunity. I saw the bee and I thought it would be a great photo if I could get him frozen. So I thought I would share this so you can consider it if it's not something you might have already thought to try. Luck always plays a big part in a shot like this. But having this incredible technology and thinking of a way to employ it really paid off that day. The EVF with no blackout and the fully electronic shutter made it possible for me to continue to fine-tune my focus while I was shooting long bursts of fast shots. I would not have gotten this picture otherwise. And this was before the 2.0 firmware and the 120 hertz refresh rate. I hope you enjoyed this video and maybe got a tip or two from it. If you'd like more like this, let me know in the comments. Also, maybe suggest a technique that would have also worked, maybe even better, that I didn't think of. And hey, do me a big favor. Please like this video, and if you don't already subscribe, do that too. Thanks again for watching. See you again soon.